Today we're talking toms that even Phil can get down with. So let's get to it. From the drum heads I use, to the accessories, the tuning, the mics, we're gonna talk about all those things in this video. I wanna start with what inspired the video. Here's the unboxing of my brand new floor tom. Sennheiser MD4212. Thank you, Sweetwater. While browsing through Sweetwater's catalog one afternoon, I discovered that you can purchase individual drums. You'd think at this point in my career I would have known that, but nevertheless, this was news to me, and it was at that point where I contacted Sweetwater and said, can we collab on a video? I would love a new floor tom. Lo and behold, this video was sponsored by Sweetwater. So if finding out this news inspires you to go pick up a new floor tom or rack tom of your own, Sweetwater's the place to do it. There's two reasons why. Number one is from now until November 18th, they have their early Black Friday deals on. You can get up to 60% off on brands like Fabian, Zildjian, Sonar, Roland, Tama, SJC, Evans, DW, Mapex, Pearl, and PDP. Just to name a few. And the second reason is if you missed this sale and you're still interested in grabbing a new floor tom for yourself they pretty much have 24 months interest-free financing year-round on most of their products thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video now let's check out how to set up toms first things first I got naked hoops 13 by 9 14 by 14 and 16 by 16 let's talk heads I endorse attack drum heads in this box are my favorite heads in here is my resonance head for the new 14 inch floor tom it's gonna be a pro flex one Next, I'm gonna drop in the lugs on the resonant head side and tighten each lug by hand until I cannot tighten it any further using my fingertips. Now that I have the resonant heads applied, finger tightened as far as I can possibly get them, I'm just going through and double checking that that's the case right now. We now have a starting point of tension in which we can use to start to bring all of the lugs up together. I'm gonna go for three to four half turns. I like to move the lugs in one half turn at a time, creating a star pattern across the lugs. I started on the 14 inch tom, I got one star pattern around, and I realized that some of the lugs that I was going over weren't at their the reason for this is I got lazy. It's a good idea to, upon starting at finger tight, turn the lug one half turn, and then check the lugs around the lug that you just turned. Make sure everything still is at. There will be discrepancies because as you tighten one side of the drum, you're shifting the way the head and the rim is placed on the hoop. And this just creates little discrepancies that you can get rid of by finger tightening after each lug turn. So I'm gonna turn this lug and then move to here, half turn and now check. And this one actually was looser. So now I'll repeat the same thing. It's usually the lugs adjacent to the one that you just turned, which it was in that case. Now I'm gonna come over here, turn and check. When you get close to the point where you're almost done, you start to notice that the discrepancies are pretty much gone at that point. Now I'm just gonna go back to turn, next, 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 and continue that for two more half turns to bring it up to three half turns, and then we'll move to the next drum. Check each lug. Make sure they all sound the same. It's really a simple concept, but oh so important when it comes to the resonant head. Take the time you need and listen to those lugs. Next up, coagulated cotton ball pancakes. 
get familiar with your drums. Essentially here, I know how many cotton balls I need to put into each one of these drums to ensure that the duration of the tone when played is gonna roughly end around the same point. What I'm talking about is or the length of the drum or the length of the resonance is what I'm adjusting with these cotton balls. Now there's definitely other tricks on the market. You don't have to go with cotton balls. I personally prefer cotton balls the most because I'm not putting anything on the head. It makes it easier to tune the drum. I've also seen guys use pieces of bed foam. They can tear it off and then put the lug screws into place through the bed foam. And that way there's actually nothing touching the heads. You just are adjusting how much foam is catching the air inside the drum. For you at home, at first, it's a very tedious process to figure out how many cotton balls go in each drum because you literally have to guess. It's just, it's kind of annoying at first, but once you get it dialed in, it really makes a world of difference when playing the drums and setting them up later on. With the Rezo heads tuned and the cotton balls inside, we're now set to move on to the batter heads. For the batter, we've got the Attack Tone Ridge 2 on all three drums. Sometimes, lugs can get sticky, and that's what this is for. I'm gonna put one little drop in the hole. Batter head attached. Next thing we're gonna do is put these on stands. There's no sense in trying to tune a drum while it's on the floor. <laughs> Inside the measure app, we have a level. You place that in the center of the drum. It's really easy to make sure the drum's level. I play metal, punk rock, rock. The style that I'm looking for when it comes to my drums are low and fast. I don't want a ton of resonance. I don't want a ton of boom. I want punchy and a lot of attack. Therefore, we don't have to tighten the batter head very far. One to one and a half, half turns is all we really need. This is the Earthworks DM20. This is the Sennheiser MD421 II. Both of these mics are incredible Tom microphones. When it comes to setting up any microphone for a Tom or a snare or any drum really, there's a really safe rule of thumb. You want three finger gap between the head and the bottom of the microphone, and then have the microphone roughly pointing towards the center of the drum. So you can see here on the DM20, about three fingers off of the head and then pointed down towards the drum. And over here on the Sennheiser 421s, same thing. With the Tom's all set up and ready to go. Let's get the kit back in here and hear what they sound like. The mixed versions of the following demonstrations were mixed by Chris Gazell. You can check out his YouTube channel in the description below for full kit mixing tutorials to learn how he makes my kit sound the way it does and how you can make yours sound similar if you have a similar setup at home. Before we get going, I want to share one last quick piece of advice for you, and that's how to use a moon gel. I find that a moon gel itself is too aggressive. It's too large. I think that moon gels should be a very last measure in quick adjustments when it comes to the duration of the tone. So to make that simple, here's my rack tom just with a finger hit. Here's my first floor tom. 
Hopefully you can hear there that the rack tom is a little bit longer than the floor tom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into quarters. This way, you can actually spread out all four corners into the four corners of the drum so that you're dampening the head a little bit more evenly. In this case though, I'm just gonna use one quarter of the moon gel. Pretty much the same length, just by adding that little adjustment. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. If you guys like this video, let me know, and maybe we can do like a snare setup in the future. I have a couple snares. We can like set those up together, and you can take a look at what that looks like. Thank you so much to my Patreon family. Thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video, and I will see you all very soon with something new.